Let's talk about security groups. Security groups are firewall rules that can be associated with an IP address that you assign to a service within one of your VPCs. Uh, I'm on right now a VPC dashboard page for a particular region and I show that there are here three VPCs and there are six security groups. It turns out that a security group is a firewall rule that is created and able to be used only within one VPC at a time. Uh, we'll get to that more in just a second. First, let's look at our list of VPCs. So as I look at my list of VPCs, one of these is the default one, meaning uh, there's a default one that exists in every AWS region. One of the things that this does not tell me though, as I look down into the information down below, is what are the list of security groups that are usable within here? What are the firewall rules that I can use within here? And it's not listed. You have to do a little extra legwork to figure that out. And uh, what you do is you look at the VPC ID, and then you go over to the left-hand side under security, go to security groups. And here you have a list of your security groups. Now in this column right here that says VPC ID, this is the uh, this is where I identify a VPC associated with a particular security group. So this means that only these security groups can be used in this VPC that's named right there. If I want to see what's uh, currently available as a set of rules within that uh, security group or any given security group, I click on its checkbox and then I select inbound rules down here. Let me go ahead and scroll up a little bit there. Um, there we go. And you can see it's got a name that's a little bit cryptic uh, and some other information. Sometimes it's not easy to see everything here and a better way to, to, to read this is to click on edit inbound rules. And let's just look and see what's set here. So here's a set of firewall rules that say, um, there's three different ones. This one says it will allow in SSH traffic on port 22 and allow that traffic to come from anywhere. This is the wildcard. Um, also, we can see that this particular firewall rule will allow uh, HTTP or web traffic in on port 80. And this notation with the two dots, it means anywhere IPv6 traffic um, any source that's IPv6 traffic. And then similarly, uh, this down below is the wildcard notation for IPv4 traffic coming from anywhere. And again, this is uh, regular web traffic. Um, if I want to add rules to this, I can click Add Rule. And for example, if I'm developing with a particular Java server and maybe during testing it allows traffic in on port 8080, then I will select custom TCP traffic coming in and I will type in 8080 right there and then I will say I want this traffic uh, to be able to come in from anywhere. Now um, for some things, uh, particularly SSH traffic, you don't usually want that to be able to come in from anywhere and so something that uh, we will commonly do is in the drop down you will select my IP address. I won't do that now but um, this is a best practice so that only you at your house can access uh, whatever is behind this firewall rule. Once the firewall rule has been created, and you can create one from scratch or update one like I did, then what you can do is look for its name. In this case, it says Launch Wizard 1. And when you are spinning up a network service or network capable service like an EC2 instance, you're going to have an option to either create a new security group with rules or select one of the pre-existing ones. Um, this particular security group right now is well suited for EC2 instances that allow SSH traffic as well as web traffic. And so if I were spinning up an EC2 instance, I might select this as a security group or the firewall rule that I'm going to associate with an EC2 instance.